Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Friends of the door, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Throughout the cultural seasons of Dar al-Athar al-Islamiyyah, we have been fortunate in welcoming outstanding lecturers that have enriched our knowledge. Tonight is no exception. Tonight we are happy to welcome Professor Michele Zini, an architect and designer, and he is co-founder of ZPZ Partners. ZPZ Partners is an architectural firm founded in 1998 by Matisse uh, Parmigiani, Michael uh, Michele Zini, and Claudia Zombali, Zomboli in Modena. Having difficulty with Italian names, sorry. I should go to Milano later, you know, take a culture. <laughs> it handles architecture, interior design, and other related professional works. Professor Zini carries out professional work in, and research in architecture and design. He covers diverse thematic fields. He is contract professor at Design Faculty, Milan Polytechnical Institute since 1998 to the present. He's a specialist in education environment. We are dealing basically with an out, a multi-talented professional who works closely with radio children who promotes, Radio Children promotes guided learning, as well as Ministry of Education. We at the DAR will be hosting workshop and a radio exhibition in February to March 10th of this year. Tonight, Professor Zini will discuss architecture, Zain, Maghayyartul Anwan, architecture and pedagogy in dialogue. We are looking forward to enjoy his lecture. We, however, cannot do that before you turn off your mobile phones and we welcome Professor Michele Zini. So good evening. Thank you for inviting me. I'm very honored and glad. Um, I prepared the slide to introduce myself, but it's already been done, so I'm going to skip it. <laughs> and uh, uh, this evening, actually, so in our work on, on schools, we have two questions, mainly. One is, what kind of educational approach or curriculum better fit the contemporary world? And is there a relation between the educational approach and the buildings in which it goes on? Okay, I, I, of course. I'm, I'm, I can answer to the second question, but they are related. And, and my answer is yes, there is a strong relation. Um, because I strongly believe that the environment can determine the pedagogical project. And the environment, uh, uh, for me, it's architecture, it's furniture, it's color, the chromascape, there's light, lightscape, the materialscape information, the documentation. is an ecosystem. No? Um, and the challenge is trying to con construct, to design and construct an, an environment that uh, for, for learning, for childhood, at the same time, both recount and support a certain image of the child that is competent, that is an explorer, equipped with great ab abilities. And I've been working with the Radio School since 1994, huh? so getting old. And, uh, the, you know, it's considered a cutting edge uh, pedagogical approach. And, and, and for the Radio, Emilia, um, that is, is, a, is an approach, it's not a curriculum. Uh, the, the environment is so strong that it's called the third teacher. Now, usually classroom has two teachers. So it's so powerful that it's considered like a third teacher in the capability to involve and, and, and shape the everyday activity. Um, 
to, to somehow value the child as a strong, resilient, capable uh, player equipped with 100 languages and capable to co-construct the knowledge. So, and of course, in the meantime, we have the new challenges of the new technology, as artificial intelligence, satellites, smartphones, that actually they change our perception of the space and our concept of identity. So we have to take into consideration all this. Um, of course, uh, it's never copy and, copy and paste. No? So, so the, um, what I have learned in these years of, of, of professions of designing schools is that every time, I mean, the school should be uh, the outcome, uh, should come from the priorities and the, the perception of, of a country, of a country that is made of families, of values, of children, of teachers, of architects, of pedagogistas. So the role of the architect is probably uh, to try to coordinate uh, all, these, all, the, all these perceptions and priorities to, to listen and try also to, to offer some, some possibilities to, above all, to engage the children and the teacher in designing the space. So it's never an individual task, it's never an individual work, it's a teamwork, it's an important teamwork that uh, must be developed together with the, so that's why I'm saying pedagogy and architecture in a dialogue, because it's something that comes from, from a multicultural uh, cross-fertilization of the, of the languages. And for this purpose, in 1996, uh, uh, I proposed and, and coordinated a two years research, putting on the same table Radio Children, that was cutting edge and, and pedagogy and Domus Academy at the time, postgraduate school and research center. It was considered at the top of the design research. And so we made a, a, a long research um, uh, work um, that was uh, with, the, with the aim to, to provide tools for design together. No? There were no solutions. It were, there were uh, two requirements. What kind of requirements an environment for the young children should have? And this was collected in a book at the end that became quite well known. It was translated in Swedish and Chinese, Korean, and et cetera. Um, uh, it's called Children's Spaces and Relations. And the, the idea was to try to find a, a language, a common language between pedagogy and architecture to, to design together the spaces for the children. Um, so it's elements of know-how. It's like a DNA project, you know? it's like a flavor of like the values that <coughs> an environment should have. Um, so, <coughs> since that, we have been designing a lot of schools, uh, we work 50% in Italy, 50% abroad, and um, trying to apply every time in a different way, because every time, and not only with the range approach, you know? we work with Montessori or British curriculum, or every time is a challenge, is a way to understanding, listening, and proposing our experience and, and, and improving as, pos as much as possible the, the ecosystem for the children's learning. And after many years of work, the, there is a short introduction, but it's just to make the, give the, the, the framework. <coughs> the I Italian Ministry of Education asked me and my father, who was an architect too, and as another first, but we enjoy working together sometimes, um, to write the guidelines for the architecture of the school architecture of the future. So uh, <clears throat> uh, today I, I, I will try to list somehow to, to show with a lot of images of our projects these guidelines. And the goal is to pass from the image on the left to the image of the right. You know? So, so to, to a school in which the teacher is talking and feeling an empty vase and, and the kid, and in a workshop um, approach in which this is a, a, a primary school classroom in, in Reggio Emilia. So kids are working maybe on, on the space, on the three-dimensional space. So it, it, but a small group of them is coding a, a robot. Uh, others are just using Minecraft to, to recreate the, the classroom. Others are drawing. The others are storytelling. So they are working on a topic. 
why they're doing many disciplines. No? So they are learning computers and coding and, and art and, and Italian, etc. And they're smoking small groups, and every child is different and deserves his path and rhythm of learning. And <clears throat> that's the opposite of the traditional school, at least in Italy, you know, when, when just was one teacher talking to, to all the kids and the kids listening. <laughs> um, <coughs> so the, I tried to, to summarize some bullet points, just to, to stay in, in, in the time. Um, and, and I will use images from all our projects. I'm not going to present one project. I, I crushed them in, in, in groups. To, <clears throat> to try to share the concept. Um, so probably you, they will not be understandable, but they must not be understandable. Um, uh, so first thing is that the school must be on the, the concept of uh, uh, classrooms and a corridor. No? No, beyond the school made a classroom and a corridor, so it's a territory for learning with attractors and that could be the labs or the atelier or specialized places. And, and you know, children don't, don't learn on in the classroom, no? They learn every moment, every time in their life. <coughs> in, and so every single space and place of the school is important. It's to be designed, it's to be nurtured. Um, and the, the idea is that probably it's a matrix of spaces where there are different levels of specialization. There are the labs or the atelier with the high performance, maybe a perfect sound, I mean, like this wonderful place, no? uh, or, or uh, accuracy in the lighting for the color perception, or maybe the tools or the equipment. So specialized places. Some less specialized, but maybe more welcoming places like the classrooms, but very flexible and some generic spaces. These are conceptual maps we, we did for the ministry and that were at the base of, the <coughs> of uh, some, some guidelines and publication, etc. For India is our institute for research and uh, documentation about education. And, and, and so uh, what comes out is, is a school, and I'm talking about school from zero to high school. So, of course, it's different according to the ages, but I'm trying to make a general framework. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so it, it's a school in which there's not the, the board, the teacher desk, and the, and the row of desks. No? It's, it, there's a diffused uh, system of boards. There are folding walls, um, tables of different shape, maybe no tables. Technology is melted in everything. And for instance, on, on the left, is, uh, that's a primary school classroom. Uh, using a school in, in Italy that we designed because the, the teachers ask us to design one, one classroom to be used in shifts with no tables to oblige the teacher to teach in a different way, you know, to oblige teachers and, and children to, to, to work in a different way. And, and, and on the right, the, the image that we saw before. Uh, and of course, if, if there's a territory of learning, there the connective space becomes something that, that are more relational spaces. It's not only moving from A to B. It's, um, it means having spaces in, can for small group activity or chatting, relaxing, one teacher talking with a group of children, children working together with other children. Um, so they are equipped spaces to promote uh, learning relationships, so these are all examples from many projects huh, in, in Rome and in and, and Reggio, et cetera. For instance, this is a, 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 an experiment, some, some projects we did with the UK public schools to transform the hallways and, and, and corridors in learning environments and learning commons only using furniture. So we designed just, just the furniture, not just to try to change the, uh, the way of using those spaces. Uh, this is a project we are doing in San Francisco, it's going to be built in June, and it's a campus, but uh, this building is actually made only of ateliers and labs, so no classrooms. So also primary school kids will move between the ateliers, and um, uh, some ateliers will be highly equipped, other 
other parts like the squares and piazzas are very generic. And so, of course, it requires a different approach from the teachers also. No? It's, uh, it's uh, an everyday programming of the activity and sharing and working. Um, <clears throat> the classroom itself become like an archipelago, made islands of activities. No? This is, um, I think, a third grade classroom. And as you can see, I mean, also the, the teacher is in between the, the students. No? There's, no, uh, <coughs> there's no hierarchy. And they are working on a lot of things in different ways, no? because every child, every diversity is included. In diversity, I mean, everyone is a different approach to learning. Mm? So, so it's to nurture also the exchange hybridization of the languages. And so these are images from the International Center of uh, Ch Childhood in Reggio Emilia. And this is the pilot project of a, of a school of preschool and primary put together, again, with, with few classrooms for the youngest. <coughs> this is the first grade, and um, they're talking about the seasons, but uh, one is painting the season, the other one is observing the leaves with a microscope, and the other doing a 3D um, model for storytelling, clay. So again, one topic, many disciplines. <coughs> and just image to see this kind of, like candies in a jelly, you know? It's like this kind of Dalmatian <laughs> um, dog kind of shape. So, and this is, of, of course, the flexibilities can be obtained on more layers. So I'm showing the many projects that we design in many different places, in many different periods. Uh, so there's not only one style, even if we design them. This is in Tokyo, and the, the flexibility is given by these foldable and movable partitions. And uh, all, with all, this old everything in this big macro furniture, around the pillars. So every time, in every culture, you have to understand, listen to the local culture, take what is possible, and, and, and offer what, what is interesting. You know? <clears throat> uh, a, a second uh, main feature is the piazza, the, the center square. The center square is the place where uh, different ages of the children can meet. So it's a place where the children can socialize and possibilities are offered to them. It's also a, a, a place where you can easily welcome the community, the neighborhood, you know, the, the families, events. <coughs> um, because school can be open, of course, in the evenings, in the, in the weekends. And it's, it's, the funda it's fundamental for the pedagogy of the relations you know, between teachers and parents and kids who are constructing together the values, the projects and desires. So again, this different samples. So this is in Bucharest, an American school. It's in close to a village close to my, my town, and Milano, etc. Every time is a dialogue in, in, with the head of school, with the teachers, to say how they want to use it according to the perspectives. But the concept remains. Uh, <coughs> that's a special place with different things to do. It's not just running and jumping. No? It's the dressing game, the infinite game, the, the library, and... Uh, <coughs> And of course, it's iconic. No? This is for nursery, that's a preschool. And it's, it's also something that represents. But the idea is that all the, the spaces just are around the, the, the center square without corridors or that. Uh, this is Tokyo. That we learned that Tokyo has no concept for square. There are no squares in, 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 city, in the city of Tokyo. So you have to invent together the gathering place, and the, the ramp is because the lot was on two layers, instead of excavating, decide to use it as a playground. It was an opportunity. So it's a, a children's center. It's the Modena, again, is another, another square, just to see differences. Another key point is the atelier. Uh, the atelier is, um, uh, is, a, is a place that is, is set um, the goal is the hybridization of the languages, is to put math together with, uh, uh, I don't know, natural science and poetry together with music. And there's an atelierista that's not a teacher. It's a person who has a background not in pedagogy, but maybe in visual arts or new technologies or in photography or in 
cooking, okay, and any kind of language. And there could be one atelier or many in, in the schools. And, uh, and actually, these are attractors and other places where probably uh, the, the research on the new technologies, not on the digital, but on the transduction between digital and, and analogic. No, it, it means, I mean, it's not talking about digital tools, it's about, I don't know, the predictability that the machine has of what you're asking to them, of this, the series, of, of, I mean, of how it works, thinking digital. And um, oh, so these are examples, there's a, di a digital atelier, we designed San Francisco, this is, was in Milano for the World Expo, where your avatar becomes a tree, and if you do it together with your friends, leaves grow faster, because if you do things together, it's better. Um, this is a pilot project we designed with Lego, the Lego Foundation, um, for, for uh, atelier for the, the digital play from zero to 99, so for, for kids and adults. So everything's on cards, changing in heights, movable elements for, for documentation, cameras, projectors, and in sensors, and you see the setting is continuously evolving. Um, but these are just samples of the atelier. It's a special place for, for experimenting. Uh, kitchen. Uh, the, the schools in Reggio Emilia and the schools that we design usually have a true cooking kitchen uh, with a chef, with, uh, uh, <clears throat> with children involved, engaged in the, in the food preparation. Um, could be connected with the vegetable gardens, a natural science program is about learning about the nutrition, food, uh, the food chain. Um, children help in preparing tables. So there's ceramic dishware and true glasses. And you can sit in the Japanese way, at, I mean, on, on the flooring or with high chairs. It, it, a, it, I think it's in Kuwait, you can easily understand is a right. No, it's a moment. It's a moment of gathering. It's a moment of culture. No? so it's important. So, our goal as architects is to prove, to support this. No, to to allow also for the youngest. So these are uh, children having lunch, and uh, this is in Tokyo. So different tools, different situation, different rights. But it's an important moment in which maybe the lighting should be perfect in terms of color perception because we are dealing with the food uh, transformation because the, the sound must be perfect because it's a moment of chatting and talking. Um, it's, it's, it's a core value in, 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 the, in the schools. The furniture, furniture I, I, I can't imagine in designing a, a school or learning environment separating architecture and furniture. It's, usually we, we, we refuse the work when, when it's separated, because it's not possible. And furniture actually are like the enzymes that make the things happen. No? They, they are responsible for the gestures. They are responsible for the, for the activities. They, they actually characterize, define the points of interest, and uh, play a, a, a very important key role in making the, sp the, the space the, the third teacher. And they foster innovation. And um, sometimes we use them as also as a layout. This was a former industrial building, and we wanted to leave it as it was in Milano. And we use this kind of macro furniture to divide the space. Uh, uh, this is, is not a joke. It's an exercise that I do with my students. But this is a true story. This was the ugly room to, supposed to become a library in the middle school where my youngest son was attending. So, and the other school said, please. Help, help me, no, it's not. A, so, okay, but it couldn't change the architecture, the flooring, windows, ceiling, boring ceiling, etc. So, it's, it's a small room, it's better, but what is interesting is that it's only furniture. Yeah? The, the flooring is the same, the lighting is the same, it's some colors and, and furniture. So, it's very powerful. No? If, if going from here to here only with furniture, it's easy, it's not expensive, and uh, sometimes architecture itself is, is not that. This is another example. No? This up and, and, and below, uh, just leaving the same mundane 
uh, lighting fixtures and, and the wooden beam, but colors and furniture and the flooring. It's, so it's this, like these soft qualities of the color of, 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 of material that are very powerful in shaping an environment. And this is a middle school, just to, to say this is not only with the young kids. You know, this movable partition, folding partition, it is continuously used for worship labs and uh, uh, meetings and presentation. Okay, soft qualities I was talking about. So soft qualities uh, is a funny, but it's an Italian word, <laughs> because if it tastes with a, a, a British person, it does not understand. No? It, it was a, in, when in the primary design, design primary in the 70s was coined this kind of word that means the immaterial quality of the design, that is color, light, acoustic, material, scape, and, and they're extremely helpful and, and powerful in design in a school. First of all, because they are in empathy with the cognitive processes of children. You know, the children as cognitive processes characterized by a strong synesthesia. You know, synesthesia means that one sense activates the other senses. So they can touch the light, they see the temperature. So they deserve a, a multisensorial environment. And on the other end, talking about architecture, if you have an ever-changing, flexible <coughs> uh, environment, space, the easiest way to give it identity is using color or, or, or material. No? Because if you change everything continuously, it's not the shape, not the form. It's the immaterial quality that helps you to give an identity. It's not by chance that in the branding of the, of the big companies, no? it's color and material that are used, because no? you can apply it to everything. <coughs> um, so this is also meaning going away from this kind of red, yellow, and blue that is a simplified color palette that uh, actually uh, reflects a simplified image of the child. No? That children are very competent users of all the nuances of the green and lime and, or, or the orange. Uh, and so these are reading areas with visual connection to the piazza, but uh, to the square, but acoustic separation. Um, and it, of course, in colors is strictly connected to, to material, no? It's, uh, it's just... Um, and uh, wh what we try to do is not only working on the color presence, so what kind of color, no? what kind of color, and the quantity of colors, of course, and, and according to the different countries, the color changes. When we work in Japan, it's different than working in Italy or working in Miami or Washington, D.C. Um, but it's also how you, how you distribute the color. So it's color presence and color distribution, working maybe with a counter color, gives depth of field, and, and to avoid the cacophonic effect. No? So to have a rich plate, a rich dish, but not too tasty in one room. No? It's, it's, it's a process. Um, and same thing for the light. Uh, again, it depends on where you are and, and, and the opening hours of the schools. For instance, in this part of the country, usually you have light, natural light. Natural light is very important, but artificial light is something that can be blended. The light is the same matter, so you can blend natural and artificial light. And uh, let's say that we, it's important to have a, an environmental lighting, like uh, a base light for the quantity of light, and accent and task light, that like a guardian angel follows, follows you. And, and give you the right performance. You know, for instance, if the source of light is very thin, small, it, it creates a shadow. So it's very dramatic. It's very good for, I don't know, for clay or, or, or other things of drama. If it's big, it creates di diaphan uh, situation. No, no, no shadows. Uh, the color accuracies of the lighting. So the capability of, of the right perception of the colors of the spectrum. So there are a lot of performances of, of the lights. And material, of course. So to have a complex and multisensorial environment means having rough, uh, liquid, smooth, transparent, semi-transparent materials, some capable of aging, like the stone and the wood, and never changing, like the steel, the glass. And, and, and it's beautiful no? that they have different behavior towards the time. Um, and acoustics, that is fundamental for the quality of the work of the teachers and of the children. And, and of course, we have 
two kinds of acoustics. One is uh, the quality of the soundscape, so cutting the reverberation time, making it comfortable, nice, etc. And insulation, avoiding one noise just disturbing the, the room aside. Uh, and so there are a lot of them, no? So a lot of them. The, so they are divided, but they are just uh, together, no? It's a, it's a complex um, system of qualities. Uh, sustainability, of course, is a key is a key word. Uh, of course, we want to to build and design for a sustainable uh, world and the future of the planet. Uh, and I would add the challenge to make it visible. I think it's a pedagogical value, the sustainability, and, it, and it's nice to show it to children. It's very complicated, but, but it's, it's worthwhile. Anyway, these are like a, a memo that must be in the, in, in the mind of an architect, no? So it's, they are goals, targets. And for, for instance, this is a company nursery for a bank. Uh, hybrid, half public, half private. And the, uh, you don't see it very well, but the roof is like an origami to, to try to optimize totally photovoltaic cells uh, to, to capture any, any, any ray of the sun, and they are visible, no? they are not hidden. It's like a, a shell, um, also lucid and sparkling. And, and of course, there's passive systems of protecting from the direct sun rays, portrait, and every time, I mean, you, you try to learn from, from, from what the other did before and what's the local uh, way to, to behave, to listen to the weather. Um, and for instance, in Italy, winter time, sun is low and is welcome because it's cold. So leaves are gone in winter time and the sun enters the atelier, that is kind of smaller places. Summertime, sun is high. We need the leaves of the trees and the porch yard. And there's a way just orientating so sort of passive system to, to make the a smart building for the environment. So this is a this is a Milano in a double ground floor, completely covered photovoltaic cells. The aim is try to take away, detach the buildings from the net, from the energy net, so they are independent. And with sliding doors to, to manage the quantity of light in, inside, and the trellis for the vines. It was just finished. And talking about the outdoors, it also means reflecting of uh, how, what are the borders, the perimeter of a school. What, what's the perimeter of a school? No? Ch children don't stop learning when they get out the, the, the school entrance. No? So uh, it, it's, it's about understanding uh, I mean, avoiding that the school is it's a wall. Uh, so on one end, there are the what we call peripherals. You know? there was, there's a tradition, for instance, in Italy of the outdoor classroom. And uh, that can be easily organized with just flexible settings for the outdoor. Or satellites. You know? This is an atelier in the middle of the garden of the school to support the experimented, children experimenting with nature. And, um, uh, the building itself can have a membrane as a border, no? so many intermediate spaces. And um, it, for instance, in this case, each classroom has a lodger uh, to, to, to work in between the outdoor and indoor. And when we did some projects in Dubai and, and uh, Abu Dhabi or Alain, it is always a matter of understanding how it's possible to use the outdoor, to cover it, to protect it, to cool it in a natural way. To, this is Venice. This is on the Canal Grande, which is seen from the other side. And this is sliding and becomes an open, completely open schools in the, where the, there's a good weather. So there are many ways, but the important thing is to have a relationship with the, with the climate, with the environment. <coughs> uh, and this, this, this was a, a project. Unfortunately, this, this was, was not built. It's one of the few. We arrived at the bed. Uh, but it was trying to use some uh, languages and approaches to, to filtering the sun rays, to have a natural ventilation, to understand how it's possible to use the culture without completely make it, uh, making a full, full uh, HVAC climate 
in it. And pergolas, winter garden, this is in Costa Rica. <coughs> so, so I think that one of the challenges is try to understand how, how to create this intermediate space, but it's very interesting because the children can, I mean, feel the rain falling or feel the different of temperature, understand the outdoor. Uh, this is a project we are building in Dubai. It's a public schools in Dubai, and I placed it because of, it's a middle school and high school, grown-ups. But we designed this kind of canopies also on the roof to use the rooftop that were calculated according to the sun path. <coughs> and it's another nice way to, to, to relate to the climate. Uh, and uh, last but not least, um, uh, of course the school is not... Let's say it, the, the learning environment is not an isolated learning environment. No? This is uh, some images from the International um, Center for Childhood in Reggio Emilia, Loris Malaguzzi, that is, it was a former cheese factory, but it, now it's a big uh, hub for there's a documentation centers and research centers, and pilot school projects, auditorium, restaurants, etc. And, and it hosts ateliers, um, worship, exhibit, like the exhibit that you will have here, no? the mosaic of marks, materials, and, and words in February, no? from February 11 to March 10, and uh, voices in the International Center. There are the art exhibit, but the ateliers of the kids inside the art exhibit, and the ateliers on the physics and the lights for the families in the afternoon, and, and the school in the morning. And <clears throat> so to say that as much as possible, I think it's important to welcome the, the community, the, all the culture inside the school and vice versa. Uh, vice versa, it means that the school's goals, like it happens sometimes, I, I think, here also, and in some museums, you know, this is in Venice. It's uh, Fondazione Quarini Stampaglia. And that's a little worship for the kids. Or we did this work with Feltrinelli, that is a bookstore chain, to try to support as much as possible uh, children accessing to books. So make this kind of spots, hot spots. Uh, so this is a, a, a triangle with the mirror inside. It's like it is, if you grab a book and go inside, it's like the infinite game. No, you are being reflecting for infinity. But it's also so it's a it's a it's a game, but it's also a place where you can read a book, and there are places to, for storytelling, to present uh, literature about chil on children and for children. Uh, made, uh, work with British Airways for T5 waiting areas, uh, for Westfield, for... But the aim is always that, of ca what we have to avoid, that there are baby parking, you know? So, so, so it's, it's important that somehow, again, it's talking about what they can do, what they can be offered. If there's something smarter, more clever, more nurturing, more interesting that they can do instead of jumping and, or, I don't know, uh, random, random playing. Uh, or outdoor, this is a sort of uh, science park we designed for the World Expo in Milano. There were eight stations, like stations, and to, for the kids to learn about the energy of life and the, and the uh, natural resources, uh, learning by doing. So, so we design also the experiences, the f furniture, the, the tools, the kit, etc. And again, it's a matter of starting from from the, the service design for the for the blueprint of, of the gestures to to design around them the um, the space. In this case, it was a space, and as pos as much as possible, multisensorial. This was. Perfume bells, which was this kind of uh, perfume of uh, natural herbs when they go up and down. And after the kids have to find out the plants where they're coming from, at, at the end they obtain a receipt of how to cook something at home with that kind of herb. Okay, so, so this kind of things. And this was about preciosity of water. So anyway. Um, so this is just a rush, no? running, uh, to, to try to list this, uh, these guidelines uh, that were aimed to try to, 
to, to support as much as possible the, um, the research, the innovation, and, and finding places for the children that are nurturing. Um, and actually, I, I, I strongly believe that the educational and AMM values can be carried on through architecture, furniture, and design because, because children deserve it. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your attention.